is right there, dude. Hey guys, this is my first actual trip video in over a month. Super happy to be back, super happy to be bringing you these videos. I'm sure you're going to love it. Uh, after my last video, my gear video for this trip, I had a ton of questions about my GoTelly GPS communication offline tracking device. You can actually uh, download maps and use maps offline with this thing too. Uh, I had a ton of questions about it, emails, everything. So I actually start using it a ton in this trip video. I start using it at around minute 45. If you're just interested in that, go in the description, click the timestamp, and it'll take you right to where I, I start using the GoTelly. But I implore you, watch the whole video. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. So without further ado, thanks for watching. Here's the video. Well, hello, folks. We're finally here. Doug and I are about to set off on our seven-day canoe trip. Been uh, doing the logistic, parking the car at one end and all that. Took almost two days to do all that stuff so we're ready to go we're on the Magnetowan River and a uh, great sunny day so let's have great weather <laughs> a little sunny super sunny <laughs> let's do it we're both in our solo canoes and our swift pack boats so it's pretty cool we get to uh, experience this trip as if we were paddling solo but with having company so that's always nice I like doing solo stuff but having company sometimes is pretty cool it's a beauty day beauty day so we've been planning this trip for quite some time. We've been wanting to do this. this we're going to cross the full length of Algonquin Park from west to east. We're already stoked on it. This is going to be hard days, long days. 175 kilometers the whole time. We're doing about 20, 27 kilometers today. You guys love me saying the word portage. I know. Portage. Coming up to first portage. Uh, it's 420 meters. So I think we'll have to actually strap strap it down and do a proper portage, pack this stuff away and all that fun stuff. All right. There was some people, just a family, some little kids, warning us of the muddy portage. So we we're more warned online about how muddy the portages were right now. And they were right. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Just a touch muddy. Oh. oh, lost my shoe. Lost my shoe. I did. Ah, I definitely should have had it tied on tighter. What way are you guys going? That way? It's a better way, huh? Oh. That was a whole ordeal. I didn't have my shoes tied on as tight as I should have. I lost one in the mud. And then got it on. And then lost the other one. So now my shoes are so tight they're going to cut off my circulation. I'm not going to lose them again. I was lucky to have two young helpers telling me all about how muddy the rest of the trail was. And the toad they just caught. Oh, it's off to a good start, man. So how, how was that portage for you, Doug? That yeah, was pretty good for me. For you? Yeah. You got a story to tell the people? I got down. What is this wrench? Keep coming up for. I got this. Uh, I got. I got. A, I got a boo boo, and I got a really, really wet leg. I went all the way into my crotchal areas at the end. <laughs> stepped in mud twice. Lost my shoe, like you guys saw. That at the end, I tried to get in the water, and it was a lot deeper than I thought. It was hilarious. Don't put that on there because then you get the white scratches. I just, no, you put it down there because it's saw Yeah, like that. Don't do it! This guy. Well, what do you got there, Dougie? It's the maiden first use. Look at that. Look at that flow. Look at that flow. Way better than my flow. Mm. Pretty good? I'm sold, man. Yeah, I know. I, I don't care if I throw it out every 200 liters. Yep. That, that's. That's the best I've ever seen. I agree. For water coming up. A little bit better than your your <laughs> your pump squeeze deal. <laughs> Good. Good. We both grab those same kind of water uh, filters. They're called the B Free Cat Catadine B Free. 
So yeah, gonna use those this whole trip. We paddle. Done that portage, the last portage of the day. We're actually, yeah. oh yeah, we're actually making really good time to so stop to have a little bite. I had some party mix, some M and M's, and some jerky. This is uh, Misty Lake. I don't know if you guys, some of you will remember when I did my alone in Algonquin using that canoe there. Um, when I did that video, I came out to this lake and I saw I know, three or four moose. But that was in June. I don't think we're going to be able to see any right now. Maybe. Maybe along, along the river later on. But they were very visible sitting at this, the end of this portage. What are you saying, Dougie? Just chilling? Oh, man. So, um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this in video. Doug has my old canoe. This is my old Swift boat. He bought it off me. And I was able to get a new one, a green one, which I always wanted. Didn't get it before because Kyle had it and I didn't, couldn't match, you know. Couldn't be twinsies. Nobody wants to be like Kyle. Nobody wants to be like Kyle, like Doug says. <laughs> very true, very true. Anyways, we both have the same boat, the pack boat, Adirondack 13.6. And we're loving it. How do you love yours? I love it. He loves I, it. I'll never go back. It'll be hard to go back. Once you go pack boat. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful out here. You can see the, Doug was just saying too, you can just see the fall colors start to come out. Maybe not through the GoPro. There's another swift boat up there. And this guy right, right here. Swift guy. I'm really glad the sun came out. My feet were frozen. Doug was tired of hearing me complain about it too. <laughs> He's shake, shaking his head. Uh, we're about an hour and a half out of our campsite probably right now, so making good time. We're just approaching our very first campsite of the trip. We're obviously going to stay here tonight. It's just about 5 o'clock now. Very pleased with our progress so far today. Today was one of the longer days, if not the longest, and we crushed it. We crushed it, Doug. I said we crushed it. All right, let's go check out the site. I've been laying here in the sun, trying to warm up a bit. My feet are very cold. My little toesies are cold. We got Mr. Douglas setting up his tent in the nice grass. Look at that. Can get it? Up. Yeah, pretty fancy. I'm so fancy. Oh my goodness, what, what, what tent are you using there, Doug? MSR Hubba NX. NX. So I think I'm going to go right next to Doug there. Or right here. Right there. But our fire pit is over there. Got some maple already, Doug went and got. It. And then, we come into the back part of it, and that's where our, our thunder box is. Our privy is way up there. Some old remnants of wood stoves and stuff back in there, but surprisingly there's still mosquitoes out And they're actually pretty abundant back in there. So I think what we're gonna do is stick to this little spot a little grassy knoll and uh, We'll sit there. We didn't bring any chairs or anything because this is Algonquin and normally they have some kind of benches built up or something, but nothing great at this site But that's all right night one Almost six o'clock now. Time to get cracking. Okay, so here's my tent. Doug and I decided to not bring the screens for our tent, so these are both just the flies. And then in conjunction with that, you have to use the footprint. 
but the footprint is very, very small, lightweight. Just a little nylon sheet. There's the footprint there. So nice and small. Ooh. <laughs> and, uh, oh, see? See? Just like so. Nice and, nice and ticky. Yeah. In the grass. That's the gist of it there. The whole gist. And then the fly just goes on top. So lots of good ventilation, less weight, um, not as much condensation. I guess I'll be going with the ventilation. What? More bugs. More bugs. Exactly. And the weight that you do save is very minimal. <laughs> but that's how we roll. Pushed over a nice uh a nice maple back there, and uh, happy with that. That's what we burned tonight. Just one, one tree. Oh. Raining birth burn. What do you got there? Ooh. What does it look like? Big fire. <laughs> Obligatory fire lighting sequence one. <laughs> one of seven. Did we do it? I think we did it. Yay! It's for dinner on the first night. I'm doing homemade dehydrated chili. We're just gonna cook or rehydrate, I guess, right on the fire, as opposed to getting the pig stoves going. Got a nice little fire going, so why not use it? Bam! Oh, supper was good. Can you tell I'm a little cold? I've been cold all day. Um, supper was really good. Homemade chili went down great. I had some Parmesan cheese on it as well. Doug's just out in the bush hanging his food. I got my air sack, so I don't have to hang. But uh, I think we're going to go fishing, go paddle down to this dam. That we saw on the map on the river. Let's see if we can get some trout or any any kind of bites really. I didn't have any luck today. Uh, Doug caught a big old fall fish, probably the biggest fall fish I've ever seen. But they're a nasty kind of fish. We don't want to eat those. So yeah, feeling good, man. Feeling warm now from the fire. Feeling warm from the from the chili. If I'm being honest, it's it's hard for me to it's being it's kind of hard for me to get back into this groove here. It's only been the one day, but I still feel all out of sorts. I don't know why. I'm sure that in a couple days that will change. It's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you. Thought it don't be to step two, step two, step two. Sorry, sorry once again. You saw early on my shoes got all muddy and wet. Just drying them here by the fire. And uh, when I got to camp, I put on my neoprene socks. They're going to be my camp shoes, keeping my feet nice and dry and warm. So they're a lightweight, very lightweight uh, solution for camp shoes. You so for a rip, are you, bud? So for a rip. Here's the portage for tomorrow. That's where we have to go. It's like an 850 meter portage. I've actually been here as well. Those little saw blades 
on the side. I've had them in videos before, or in a video before, coming through here on my solo trip. Yeah, so this is what we can find without going down the portage. Just a little set of rapids here. There's a big old driftwood down there. Who knows what else is down there. I'm not going to go down there tonight, that's for sure. Not going to be dummies. Like this guy. <laughs> he didn't even hear me. Yeah, this is too fast for, for fishing and very shallow too. Well, what'd you think of today, Doug? Day one. It was great. I was uh, a little worried about this trip, but man, we uh, this was a longer day and we did good. We did good. So I have more confidence for the next six days. <laughs> yeah, same here. I got my uh, got my canoe on the portage worked out. All so balanced. All balanced out. So we're laughing. We are laughing. Ha ha ha. Huh. Huh. Talk to yourself. It's all about the face in the camera. Yeah. People. Some people don't like it. You know. They say, Joe, you put your face in the camera too much. Let's see the scenery, not your stupid face. Let's see the scenery, not your stupid, stupid face. face on you. Stupid Joe. <laughs> Anyways, yes, I agree. Today was a good day. Today was like uh, uh, getting used to what living out here is like again. I'm definitely not used to it yet, but uh, I'm on my way. As I've said, into the camera multiple times. I've killed a full battery on my DSLR and I barely used it all at all today. So I do believe these batteries are done for my old camera here. Okay, I think we're just going to hang around the fire a little bit and then uh, head on into bed. Tomorrow morning, get up, paddle to the 850 por portage, and uh, start portaging. Have a poop and a portage. Poop and a portage, he says. Portage. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I, yeah. I, meant, por I meant to say portage. No, I really didn't. You, didn't you know why? Because it's not right. Because it's the wrong way to say it. That's right. Canada! French Canadians! took our time and hung out by the fire and ate food and drug drank 10 cups of coffee <laughs> but 12. We, 12 he says but we can't sit here forever uh, the mist is kind of dissipated there over the over the lake we got a clear view going so just packing up now head on our way Who are you talking to? well there's a little oh. guy in there oh. hey -o. Oh, ducky. <laughs> so almost all packed up. I made a little lunch bag for myself to throw in the top of my backpack because I have no outside compartments and I don't want to dig in, pull this big bad boy out, open it and sort through it and get what I want for lunch. I've already made my sandwich. I've got a granola bar, some energy uh, blocks, some jerky. Uh, I think that's it for right now. If I do need more, I can grab it out, but I feel like that's enough food for the day to make it to, to camp. So it might make it a little easier on myself. Doug is doing hot lunches. So so we got time anyway. Um, not feeling so rushed. Not feeling so rushed yet. Look at the lovely bear poop. The lovely bear poop right on our beach. Very seedy. Lots of seeds. Alright, we're off. Doug's already gone. Wait for me, Dougie. He doesn't care. That was a good first campsite. On our way now. Oh yeah, it's nice out here. Oh, she's bright. Yo. 
Man, this is nice. No, don't do that. Yeah, you are old. I know. Doug's coming to the realization over here. <laughs> oh, look at this mist. Would you look at it? Stupid face. No, look at yours. Oh, we're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, what a beauty morning. Better now. Look at Right there? Right That's uh, not the case. We're gonna start the day off with a big 850 meter portage right at the end of this lake. It's gonna be like five minutes before we get there, so. Strip down layers and get right into her, I guess. Where'd you, where'd you get that at? Stuck in a tree. Found it stuck in a tree, did you? Stuck in a tree. Single carrying is very important on this trip. Having 38 kilometers, of total, total 38 kilometers of portage in seven days. We really need to continue to single carry and, uh, I don't see that being a problem. We're kind of flying through these 900s and these 850s. But again, like I was saying, I think on the second last day, maybe the last day, we got like a 3,000 meter back to back with the 2,500 meter all around rapids on the Petawawa River. So anyway, so we'll, we'll be down weight and uh, stronger and stuff. Uh, we're going right now from Misty Lake Back into the Petawawa. Well, back on the Petawawa. We've been paddling on here for quite some time. Very, very pretty, very calm. And it's pushing us at a slow pace with the current. Uh, we're just coming up, we just passed actually a portage. We're able to, to paddle through it in high water, it said. So this is high water. And we are paddling through it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. But now we'll see no moose at all. <laughs> Got a little baby brookie. I'm gonna put him back in because he's way too small to eat. Bye, guy. Nice. First trip. And first fish of the trip for me. Bye, bye, him. So I got a second hit, but he spit it right away. That's what I got—a little spinner. I have a MAPS number three. Doug's using a jig, we'll just see, seeing what works better. Oh, no more luck. Doug's still trying a few more casts before we head on, but we gotta make up some time now. We really, really dawdled. We were dawdling this morning. A couple of dawdlers, us. We got a still a full day. We've only moved a little tiny bit on the map. We're going to get off the river onto a couple big lakes. We're going to camp on a big lake tonight, uh, Burnt Root. Burnt Root Lake, I believe. Oh, it's a nice day. Very nice. All right, my second trout. Another a better size there for sure. But what do you think? You want to eat this guy or no? I don't want to drag it around all day. This guy's going back in. Nice little brookie. If I get a really big one, we'll eat him. Oh, super pumped on that. That is uh, a beautiful fish. Released him nice and healthy, only handled him for a second. Very cool. Bam, son! Yeah. Got a little brookie. I'm going to eat this guy. Doug and I are going to share this with our with our supper or lunch regardless. I'm, Doug's gonna get get his own. He says, "I'm uh, I'm super hungry. I'm gonna stop for lunch anyways. So this guy's getting eaten. Maybe not as big as the last one I caught, but whatever. That's fine. So we're gonna dispatch this guy humanely and eat his soft flesh. Oh, he's on a roll. He's on a roll. Second one. Yeah, bigger than the last, but not by much. 
he's getting eaten up too. Perfect, we're eating this guy too. We got a couple decent sized trout. I'm stoked. I'm very, very happy with this. Okay, same thing. Dispatch this guy nice and quick, and we're gonna eat up soon. Oh, she's a baby. She's just a baby. We're gonna keep her anyway, just to add to the pot. Number three, in this section of the rapids on Petawawa, this has been the hottest for me here by far. Cool. I got the Apollo fish. You see the captain from the last pod. Anyway, I gotta eat Joe's fish for lunch, so I don't know how I feel about that, but. I brought some humble pie as well, if you'd like. Humble pie. Yeah. So that is going to supplement our lunch. Doug's got some fish crisp and a frying pan. And oil. Ba Bam. And oil. Oil too. And a bush buddy. And a what? It's like uh, we're all squared away. All right, so we got this much fish crisp, Doug brought generously, and we don't want to waste it all, right? We don't want to just throw the fish in there. So I got an extra bag for that reason. We'll pour some in here. Fish crisp the heck out of these boys. Actually, girl. Oh, thanks for that. Should be fine. Because, you know, we're going to catch a bunch more fish on this trip. This isn't the end of the fishing. Day two has been very nice, although I fear we are far behind schedule. <laughs> That's all right. No need to fear, truth is truth. <laughs> all right, should be ready. Oh, she's ready. Skin side down. No, but damn, those are some all right plays. Okay. They okay, they okay. They're okay. That's decent. Yeah. Bam, son. Hot. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fish burrito. Your fish burrito. Alright, I did say I was going to eat the skin, didn't I? You did. I did. Oh, it's so hot. Mm. That's good, man. Well. Very good. You wanna, you wanna cheers her? Cheers her, bud. Yep. <laughs> good stuff. Got some water out for coffee. Shut your mouth. See? See? We chew with our mouth closed on this trip. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna eat this up. You don't need to see no more chomping. Chomping? Well, we're out of the uh, out of the river now, the Petawawa River. This is the end of it right here, these rapids. And then we're in a grassy bay, big trout and burnt root, I believe. All lakes, all big lakes. So we're just going to sit here for maybe five minutes to take a couple casts because this is our last opportunity in the river uh, for today. But then we really got to book it. I keep saying that. Doug's got one. Nice, dude. That's beauty, man. So this boat is named the Emerald Grace. I always wanted to name my boat, and my daughter's name seemed absolutely perfect for this green boat. Could not name the red boat the Emerald Grace. That would just make no sense, right? <laughs> oh, gotta love it. I miss my daughter, I miss my wife already. But it's uh, it's okay. You normally think about them at night when I'm laying in bed or when I wake up or on a portage. 
or when I'm paddling a lot, pretty much all the time. I'm a very lucky man. I have two amazing people in my family, my immediate family, amazing ladies. Very lucky. All right, we're up into Grassy Bay now. This Grassy Bay can be kind of hard to navigate a little bit. I've been here twice now. So the first time I came by myself, and it was like really one of my first solo canoe trips here. And my first, first solo canoe trip in Algonquin. Um, and I couldn't, actually it's right, it's right there. What? It's right there where I got turned around, but I was able to watch a moose for like an hour. There's a huge blue heron in front of us. Grassy Bay is beautiful. Very moosey too. Very moosey. Super simple, man. I love this thing. As long as you cross it. <laughs> Don't cross thread it. They make bigger bags. There's only a half a liter. I gotta get a bigger bag, but lovely. Well, haven't talked to you guys in quite a few hours. We've had a long day. It's quarter to six right now, and we're on a 300 meter portage. We still have a couple hours to go, at least eight kilometers. So, it's gonna be like, I don't know, almost eight o'clock by the time we get to camp. But that's all right. We did spend a lot of time fishing today. I'm glad we did, so it's no big deal. We have seen a few people recently. We hadn't seen any all day up until now, up until maybe a few hours ago. We paddled through Grassy Bay, through White Trout, through Big Trout, and now we're on the portage to Longer Lake. Not Long Lake, Longer Lake. All right, this is our last portage of the day, but because we're silly, we're going to run the rapids. Should be fine. I realize that you probably can't even see anything because my camera view is blocked by my canoe. We're not gonna get hung up on a rock. We're going to go easy and around the rocks, around the rocks. Nice. Smooth sailing. Woohoo! Almost there. We got maybe another half an hour, not even. It's 7.15, so we might get there a little bit early. Only 11 and a half hour, uh, hours of paddling instead of 12 today. We've made it. We made it. Yeah? We made it and we got wood. 7.40. 7.40. We really lucked out with this camp. It's super nice, huge open camp. I was actually here on my spring um, Algonquin solo trip. Uh, I came here, I had to pee really bad, I remember, and I ran up, paddled up and found this. Came up here and peed and then <clears throat> check out this fire pit, man. This fire pit is something else. They left wood here uh, with it. Right there? Yeah. It's a little close. <laughs> oh, silly dog. So yeah, this fire pit is pretty epic, man. Full Full fire pit. <laughs> wood, dry, good wood. A, be you, a bench. Thank you very much, Red Pine Bay wood collector. <sighs> so almost eight o'clock. We left before nine this morning. Long day. Very long day. Just gonna get the tent set up. It's really full of condensation still. Super wet. So I'm gonna let it sit there. Not put my sleeping bag or my pad or anything in it. Just let it kind of air dry. 
Uh, I can do all that in the dark, no big deal. Tonight is chicken quinoa stir fry with water chestnuts and mushrooms and green peppers and lots of love from the wife. Lots of extra love. Doug found a little secret over here. Where, where are we going, Dougie? Huh? Where are we going? Where are we going? Doug found a nice big lookout up here. Oh man, what a beauty night. What a beauty campsite on top of the... Agreed. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Let's put my tent up here. Wow. You're running my shot. I'm making your shot better. <laughs> sure, bud. Look at that. Nice. Beauty. Very productive day. I was happy with the fish. Like I'd say we did decent fishing today. Oh yeah. And you didn't put any mine on film. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you put any mine on film? Yeah. Well then. That's the old uh, pot calling the kill black right there. Alright, I'm starving to death. Alright, I got this awesome stir fry. Mmm. Mmm, smells so good. Woo! It's a little steamy. It's a little steamy. Perfect. I'm still, this is a new pot to me, so I'm still trying to gauge the amount of water I need per food. I think I might have put a little bit too much. But that's alright. I'll eat it like a soup, no problem. Oh nice, it's uh, all, most of the water has evaporated and absorbed and I don't have to eat it like soup, which is fantastic. That looks great, there's carrots in there too, water chestnuts, mm-mm, supper time. 8.30. 8.30 supper time. <laughs> Everything rehydrated really good except for the chicken, the chicken's a little chewy but whatever. Um, hearty meal, very hearty meal, thanks honey. She doesn't even watch my videos, why am I saying thanks? Thanks, honey. Cheers. Mm-mm. Water chestnuts, carrots, green peppers, red peppers, chicken, water chestnuts. Did I say that? Uh -huh. Water chestnuts. And onions, garlic. Something else I'm missing. Carrots. Did I say carrots? Anyways, very good. Very good food. I'm gonna eat this up. Have a couple of sips of my whiskey, I think. Deserve it after this uh, this day. This is a very productive day. Well, what was your favorite part of today, Doug? What stands out to, to you the most? Well, I got a monster. Uh... Monster trout that you don't have on your video. You did. It was a beauty. That bigger than beauty. Bigger than any of the other ones by far. By far. That was a nice fish. Beauty fish. Beauty. Beauty. That's, so big. That's what you're going with? Yeah. Yeah. And I got a snapping turtle. Yeah, that was cool. Okay. A little baby. A little baby snapping turtle. Uh oh. I can't forget getting within four feet of a loon in my canoe. Oh, so many great things. So many things today. What's that? You say, Joe, what was your favorite part of today? Oh, that's a good question. Hey, Joe, what was your favorite part of today? Well, Doug, uh, when, right before we ate those trout. Oh, we ate trout. Oh, yeah. I forgot that part. When I caught those three trout, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. I was really happy about that. Yeah, you should be. I have redemption. Trout redem Redemption Trout. You guys ever watch that? I think I've talked about this before. There's a, a YouTuber named Tumble Home, and he does awesome, awesome videos. He had a video called Karma Moose and the Redemption Trout. And, uh, oh, I'm in focus now. Perfect. Really, really cool video. Anyways, check it out. Tumble Home. Tumble Home is a part of a canoe. It's how flared out the sides are. Am I right? Oh, you're right. I'm right. 
I'm so right. So my favorite part of the day, catching those trout, eating those trout um, at lunchtime, just kind of relaxing there at the portage. That's one of the things I usually remember about these trips the most is like having a really cool lunch at a portage. You know what I mean? Even when even when we were there, you said it too. Like look I what said it. I said just stop for a second and look at this. look what we're doing. We got fried, yeah, fried trout on the edge of this beautiful rapids, just gorgeous. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is going to be an epic trip. This is going to be one to remember for sure. Like, a, a really, really cool day today. And this is only day two. We have seven full days. So we have five more full days, four more full nights. Very cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's about 10.30. Or no, it's 11, isn't it? No. It is 11. 10.57. Wow. Yep. It's 10.57. <laughs> we are... Ready for bed. We've been ready for bed for quite some time, but it was nice sitting by the fire for a little bit. So off to sleep, and I'll catch catch you up in the morning. I'll catch you up in the morning. <laughs> I'll get with you in the morning. Check your leader. Check your leader. What movie is that from? Check your leader. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. I'm sorry. Good night. Good morning. Oh, great night's sleep. Hey. Huh? <laughs> Good morning. <Hey. laughs> what? <laughs> Had a great night's sleep. Um, lots of condensation again on the inside. I even left the the, vest the vestibule open, but uh, that's all right. I think I'm gonna wipe it all down today with the towel. My sleeping bag soaked on the, on the feet and stuff from from rubbing on the the tent too. Oh. Beautiful morning, from what I can tell. Oh yeah, it's a misty morning again. I'm gonna get up and uh, think. Uh, I'm gonna switch it up, have some oatmeal today. Yeah, me too. Nice. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of what we did yesterday and the day before. So, the day before we started at number three, came down camp there yesterday we went and we're camped there that was a big day and then tomorrow today we're going all the way up burnt route into the petawawa <laughs> um over into the petawawa up catfish and camping on the top of catfish so today should be a quicker day. I'm gonna put this DSLR away. I'm killing battery on here like crazy somehow. I don't know if these batteries are just super old or what, but I'll bring the GoPro in my canoe. Doug's just over here catching fish. Left and right. Goodbye sight. That was a very, very nice sight. Exactly what I wanted. Nice and big and open. I wish I would have filmed it. I threw a big old spoon in these rapids up here. We got Beauty brook trout. That's the biggest one I've caught this trip. It's going back in. Look at the size of the spoon I threw in too. We've been using like like zeros and ones and stuff. I threw in a big old Len Thompson zero five of diamonds. Like the other zeros we're using are maps tiny tiny. This thing's big, so I didn't expect to catch anything, but it was just on my on my rod. Very, very cool. That was my best trout of this trip. Best trout ever in Algonquin. Bam! This is a, this is a beast. I got a bigger one than last time he's fighting like crazy oh my goodness listen <laughs> he's pulling at it like nuts yeah boy you're coming in you're coming into the bota <laughs> come on where is she oh my goodness it's making a wake oh she's a pretty oh man underneath the boat and everything Oh. <laughs> we're eating this one. We're, we're definitely eating this. Oh my goodness, that's a record for old Joe. Yeah, I gotta get a picture with it and everything. Oh my goodness, we gotta eat this guy. That's a Yes, a big old one. Oh, look at this guy. What a pretty fish. That is our lunch time today get some real fillets off that guy oh, I need to get my own. bam son 
So that must be the trick, man. We're, we're lucky here because it's it's deep water and I'm able to get away with using this big spoon. It's not even that big, but for brook trout, it's, it's decent size. Um, a lot of the <clears throat> the rapids we've been coming near, the, the bottoms of the rapids have been very shallow. So using a big spoon like that wouldn't work though if you're just getting hung up on everything. But man, like proof is in the pudding. Super happy on that guy. Wow. Thank you. Make a good meal. I'm, I'm, I'm understanding the Algonquin Park fishing now. Uh, I never had good luck before. I was getting, you guys have seen, getting skunked and getting little freaking trout that big. Previous trips. Weather, everything must just be perfect right now. This trip this is the best fishing in Algonquin I've ever done. Oh man, I'm so stoked on that guy. I gotta measure him, but he's big. He's big. Two lengths of my fingers like this. Over a foot. Oh no, longer than that. <laughs> Trout in my belly. So I'm gonna keep fishing. If I catch any more, I'm gonna let them go. This is more than enough. I think Doug's, Doug's on a mission to catch his own. Another one on, but he's a little guy. Oh, it's a fall fish. So these are the things that I would normally catch in Algonquin in previous years uh, without too much trouble at all, but I don't want to eat that little chubby guy. Chubby fall fish, dude. So we'll release, release him back in. So my guy, I'm gonna eat this guy up, fillet him, do fish crisp again, because that was really good. Let it be known that I let my big one go. Doug says, he wishes that he could catch fish like me. I didn't say that. You did. I heard it. I said, let it be known. I let my big one go. Let my people go. Go, go. So we're just at a campsite here, right off the Portage Trail. And this is a perfect spot to fry these up, have a little bit of lunch. Nice and shaded over here, for the most part. Not going to fit, Joe. <laughs> what would we do? Uh -oh. wah, wah. Sounds like a plan. These bush buddies are so awesome, man. Like, what's the alternative? I, I guess any twig stove we could do this with, but these are so quick. The alternative is building a full fire, and I don't want to do that at some random campsite for lunch. So, these little, I guess a fuel stove or anything like that would work too, but this is just so self, you know, you don't have to do anything. I'm literally picking up the sticks. It's very easy. We'll batter them up in fish crisp and fry them up. That's a good hunk of meat. Good amount of meats. Heck yeah, I love that color. That orangey pink color. Alright, we've already eaten a few pieces each. Look at the size. Look at the size of this meat. Like one of these little pieces of filet is a nice amount of meat. Mm. I'm not going to eat the skin on the older one. It is a bit fishy near the skin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you're a fishy kind of guy. Yep. Oh. Oh, man. So good. Thanks for cooking this, Doug. You're welcome. We're about to leave here and head on from our lunch spot to our actual camp spot. Thought I'd show you guys these things. I got sent the this two way. Um, communication device slash GPS from a company called GoTelly. They sent these to me for free to try out. So thanks guys. Um, and they've been working out really well. We've been texting back and forth through our phones. They sync up through a cell phone without service uh, using Bluetooth. You don't have to have it plugged in or anything like that. So we've been texting back and forth for the past couple days, but today I think we're gonna track our progress to the camp. So we have a little um, wager going on. Doug thinks we're about like seven clicks out, and I think we're about 10. So um, we're going to, without looking at the map and actually figuring it out, we're gonna go by it, the GoTelly and go through the phone to track it. So I'll, I'll probably catch up with you guys halfway there and see the progress and then once we get to the camp we'll go through it. There's a lot more functions on this thing. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. So thanks again guys at GoTelly and I will be in the boat. And we're off. That campsite we were at was at the end of this portage. Just gotta go up here. 
probably gonna fish in the rapids again. <laughs> waste, waste more time, as it were. But it's a, uh, you know, you're not here all the time. We got our fishing poles. Fish are biting. So what if we pull into a camp at eight o'clock again? <laughs> oh man, full on fish. Saving our lunches, which is great. In case we need them after. In case we get winded, in case we don't have enough food. I don't think getting winded, like uh, bound by wind, is an issue on this trip because we're going from the west side of the park to the east. Wind predominantly blows that way. We do have some northern travel going and have experienced a little bit of wind, but nothing even close to being uh, able to stop us. And the muddy portages haven't been that bad. They've been muddy, don't get me wrong, but nothing that like you can't do. The first day was the worst when I lost both my shoes in that muck. <laughs> oh, pulling a Joe left and right, you know. Old Joe. Okay, I decided to start it after we were done fishing at the falls in the end because we're going to be able to track how many kilometers an hour we're, we're doing, which is another cool function of it. So just starting it up. My phone got all messed up, so I got my wife's sweet pink iPhone. Ah! Got my wife's pink iPhone. So my, I'm on the, on the grid, and you can download maps to this too. You can get Google Maps, uh, Google Earth, tons of maps around your area or whatever. We don't need that right now, so I just have a grid. But I'm hitting start, and now it's going to track calculative time: three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, and then the meters we've gone, which we haven't gone any meters yet. Zero meters! Uh, I'm just waiting, there we go, 12 meters. Yeah, it just took a second to kick on. So, there we go. And I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna leave my GoTelly on. And I'll, I'll get back with you in one hour. It's 316, Austin 316 right now. And I'll get back to you around 416. That'll be about an hour, right? <laughs> we'll see how far we've come. I think we can do at least four kilometers, at least four kilometers in an hour. Dougie, what do you think we did? It's uh, as promised, it's 417. Took a minute to freaking get it going, but uh, well, how many kilometers do you think we did? Well, this last lake we had a headwind, uh -huh. now we're going with it, but uh, not as fast as I think we would like to have done. I'm gonna say four and a half, four and three quarters. Four and three quarters, we got 4.98. Five kilometers, five kilometers, and we're going against the wind and on it if we're being honest looking for where we were supposed to turn a couple times yeah. but that's that, pretty good yeah that's pretty good i'm happy with that and we're almost at our camp i don't think i would plan a trip around five kilometers an hour no so, that's good yeah very good i feel like a man all right that's cool to find out um yeah very cool and i can save it for my records for my records nice all right, we are almost done. So my estimation of eight of ten kilometers, uh, we had we didn't start that until two kilometers after that because we portaged a couple more and uh, went in the rapids. So I was still off quite a bit. All right, we're approaching the second last campsite um, on Catfish before the portage, and we're gonna check this one out. And if it's decent, if it's nice, we're gonna stay here. If not, we're gonna go on to the next one. And then, make our, and then make our decision on that. Oh, there's a bald eagle. Yeah, I see, it. I see it, I see it. Nice. Maybe the loons use it too. Some nice quartz, pink and white. This is pretty nice. A little on the windy side. Woo! What are you doing? This is decent. <laughs> it is pretty breezy, like I said. 
Well, we figured there's no sense in both of us pedaling down there if we're going to have to pedal back anyway, and it's not far. So what we figured out, we, what we figured we do is Doug's going to take his Gotelli GPS and his cell phone, and I've got mine sitting right here, and he's going to pedal down to that other campsite, and he's going to tell me, A, come meet me here, or B, I'm coming back. It's not worth it. So we'll wait. We'll get the text from Doug. Pretty cool, man. He's so far. He's so far. So this dots me, this dots Doug. I can just push Doug and it tells me how far he is, 671 meters away from me in the direction he's at. And uh, that's pretty cool, so I can track him or whatever. And then I just go back to um, chat and wait for his his message. We've just been texting about catching fish and whatnot. But uh, yeah, hopefully he texts soon. Okay, Doug just texted me. He says, yo, camp is small, just as windy, going to go fish down by the portage. I'm going to say, I'm staying here. Okay, I'm staying here. And he replies with, yep, I will return after I fish. <laughs> Good luck, Doug. All right, that's pretty cool, man. I'm pretty impressed here. Okay, I got some info on the Gotelli for you guys. The Gotelli's only competitor is Gotenna, and it, the Gotelli is more sophisticated and better suited for group outings because of a few advantages. It has a longer range, two to five kilometers, independent GPS tracking for all members with the Gotelli. Not all Gotelli devices need to be paired with a phone. Like you could leave um, a, a tracker at camp or with your dog like attach your dog's collar or anything like that. As long as your GoTelly is paired with your iOS or Android app, then you're good to go. You can track the locations of all the devices. Uh, th the battery on these guys lasts for 48 hours rather than like relying just on your phone's GPS, which obviously wouldn't run for 48 hours straight. And it's rugged and waterproof. This is the only device that has real tracking in real time. SOS button, which is there, you can push it and it goes off on here. And so Doug would get it on his. If I was in trouble, I'd hit that and he'd come running. And it also has geofencing. Only device that has all those. So GoTelly is obviously free, right? Like after you buy it, the, the device, you have it. You don't have to pay any kind of like monthly fee or satellite thing or anything. It obviously just works with your phone. So I'm pretty impressed with this thing for real. As always, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can find out more information about it. Again, I want to thank the Gotelli guys for sending me a couple, two of these. Um, they work good in pairs. They were actually also saying that um, it's good for like stadiums and things like that with your family because uh, sometimes the cell phone service in stadiums doesn't work. And this is obviously going off Bluetooth with no service at all. Pretty cool. Anyways, thanks to the guys for sending me a couple of these. Um, having fun using them. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's working out pretty good for us. So, Gotelli. I really got to get my sleeping bag and my tent um, dried out. So I'm going to hang my sleeping bag and set up my tent so that the sun, to, to take advantage of the sun while it's still here. It's shining right into this campsite, so it's perfect. This sleeping bag was drenched from all the condensation in my tent last night. Oh yeah, she's soaking wet and stinky. Stinky! Well that's drying out. I'm going to go grab some firewood. Hopefully I have a bunch for when Doug gets back. Love this saw for this kind of stuff. Old Boreal 21. All right, off into the woods. It's pretty slim pickings, but there's this dead striped maple in this clump of live striped maple, which is a decent size. So, definitely going to take this guy. tight in here. Nice. That's really good and dry. Okay, it's a start. It's a start. We got a second one. Bonus! The striped maple is really straight grained. It splits really well. And the bark on it is actually very, very fibrous. You can you can make cordage out of it, you can make birds nests out of it, like for tinder bundles and stuff, the inner bark. Once you fluff it up, it's a lot like um, like a basswood almost, inner bark. 
Straight maple, soft, it's soft maple for sure. The moose love to eat the shoots. See what I mean about the bark? It's very stringy, it likes to stay attached to itself. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Mosquitoes. <laughs> there you see it, old Dougie's coming back. So I was able to get a couple more pieces of wood and have that much wood cut up, so it's pretty decent. I'm getting supper on pretty soon here. Aside from the fact that I'm starving, there is a ton of mosquitoes, like more so than we've seen the whole trip. So we're gonna get this fire going, dual purpose style. Old lighter and birch bark. There she goes. I realize it's kind of hard to see, but I wanted to show specifically what we're doing. So this is Algonquin Park. This is a humongous park. Biggest in Ontario, one of the biggest in Canada. And we're going from west to east, all the way through it. So if you remember correctly, we started on number three, which was uh, Magnetowan. We paddled through the Petawawa River, through Big Trout, up into Burnt Root, through, Burnt Trout, sorry, through the Petawawa. <laughs> we're gonna now and then up into Catfish. We're camped here right now at the top of Catfish. Tomorrow we're gonna go up into Cedar, down into Radiant. I believe we camp near Radiant, or at the even somewhere in the falls in, on Petawawa. And then we go all the way. Can you still see me? Am I still here? here? Ah! ah! All the way down the. Pe all the way down the Petawawa until we go out. So again, we started here and we're ending here. It's a, it's a very cool thing. It's gonna be a, a sweet, have something. It's go. Talk, talk much? I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel accomplished. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel very accomplished once this is done. 
Jeez, Lou. Oh, yeah, <laughs> brother. <laughs> it's that time of night. It's been a recurring thing. Reoccurring thing. The oh, yeah. My whiskey's done now. I'm gonna drink whiskey. No, I said my whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Devil's piss. The devil's butter. We just looked at the map, and tomorrow we have a whole lot of portaging. It's like basically we're on a hiking, like a like a backpacking trail with a canoe, canoe on your head. Yeah, with a canoe on your head, Mr. Canoe Head. So yeah, we got a bunch leading up to this big one. We got like, man, I don't know, a couple of clicks worth of portages split up really quick, and then we get to our big one, which is two thousand three hundred and forty five meters long. Can't wait. And then we have a couple of big ones after that, seven hundreds and something like that so we don't have much paddling tomorrow to, to radiant was it radiant yep. to radiant lake um but the portaging is a lot so getting rid of all the weight we can tonight i.e eating lots of food drinking the rest of booze what did you think of today today was a great day fantastic day beautiful day <laughs> what weather beautiful fishing the fishing was the on point i think today was my favorite day so far so yeah. so and it was too hot. Sun was hot. Well, I, I should have brought sunglasses. Oh, now he admits it. I'm going to go blind. Oh, my goodness gracious. Anyways, all right, guys. I think that's it. We're going to head to bed really soon. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Get up early in the morning and head out earlier than we have been. I think we should. He won't. All right. That's it. Good night. Goodbye. Forever. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>